Hey guys, Morton from Flip Normals here. And in today's video, we are gonna be looking at the XP Pen Artist 22. Now, XP Pen reached out to us a while ago and asked if we would be interested in reviewing one of their screen tablets. We don't really do a lot of reviews here on the channel. We did one previously of the Huion tablet, also a screen tablet. And a lot of people specifically have been asking about the XP Pen as well. So we accepted their offer and, and thought we might, you know, want to bring you our perspective on what it's like to use a tab like this for sculpting. Now a disclaimer, I just want to make sure that everyone understands, like XP Pen, they did send us this tablet. But like I told them as well, I'm going to be doing a honest review, you know, what do I actually think about this tablet and, and is it worth using for sculpting? And in order to properly review this, I wanted to make sure that I used it for a while before just jumping into it. I didn't want to just use it for a week and, and call it done because, you know, sometimes things just come up that you don't realize immediately when you start using a product. So I created this Scarlet Witch project to take from start to finish with this tablet. And I felt that gave me a pretty good understanding of how the tablet works and, and also, you know, my impressions of this tablet. Now, the first critique I have of this is actually not with the tablet itself. It's actually the pen. So this is, this is not the pen. This is the pen that you get with, with this tablet, right? So very similar looking to all other pens that you get with most other tablets nowadays. But the main issue I had with this exposition um, was that it's kind of small. I don't really have large hands. I have fairly average hands, I think. Uh, but I found it to be a little bit on the tiny side. Here's a, a Wacom pen uh, for reference, as most people are, are familiar with those. And if I hope you can see that. Like this one is, is wider here at the tip and this one is sort of just more flush. Um, I don't know pretty similar diameter, but this tip thing right here on the Wacom pen means that it's easier to grip and hold on to. I found myself struggling a little bit with this and, and with longer, you know, sculpting sessions, I get a little bit of hand pain. I mean, it's, it's obviously a good indicator that you need to take a break, but you know, it's, it's one of those things that I noticed that I still have some issues with. You get more and more used to using this type of pen. It's not that big of a deal, but especially when you come from a tablet where you have a larger pen, it, it might be something that you notice as well. And sort of staying within the pen area when it comes to this tablet. Another thing that I found that's happened a few times less and less the more I actually use the tablet, but that was very soft clicks um, on the screen wouldn't always register. Now, I'm using this primarily for sculpting, right? So it's more broader strokes or small strokes, something that constantly happens on the screen. But especially if you're working in ZBrush or I don't know, Maya, Blender, whatever, any kind of software, you have to click on UI items and they can be quite small sometimes. And especially if you're used to using a mouse or something, you know, you're just, it's just a click. But with this, I found that you have to apply a little more pressure than you expect in order to click something. Like I said, it is something that you do get past. The more you start using the tablet, you get more used to what kind of pressure it actually needs. And now it's not so much of a problem. It does happen occasionally, but you know, just something to be, to be mindful of as well. Now onto the actual tablet. So the first thing that I noticed when I got everything set up and I started working, I, I adjust my tablets quite a lot. The screen tablets that I use, because sometimes I want to sit more upright and then I'll change my, my posture. I'll hunch over it more, you know, sit back again. So I actually adjust my tablets, the angle of it quite a lot. And then this one has a, you know, a lot of freedom when it comes to adjusting it. The problem is the actual mount or the stand itself. I don't know which one, but it feels a little flimsy. So when it's set there and you're just sculpting, you don't really notice it, but when you have to adjust it up and down, that's where I think the shortcomings uh, sort of come into play. It starts to feel flimsy and a little bit wobbly. I mean, if you just have one position for the tablet, you know, you always like it in the upright position or down or whatever. I don't really think you're going to notice this one, but particularly for myself, because I do adjust this a lot, I, I don't find the, the mount itself 
uh, very good like you have to pull up quite a lot and in order to push it back like you have to get it just at the right angle to for to like click in uh, properly um, it might not be an issue for you like I said if you just leave it in one spot but for me it, it has been a little bit annoying I think it actually comes with one of just the standard mount that they have on the back there that most of these um, tablets have so like I also have you know I have a Huion tablet and I'm kind of considering taking the stand from that one and seeing if it'll fit on my XP pen now, you know that could that could be a solution. Or if you have an, any other stand, I think you could. Yeah, I think you can attach it uh, directly to to the tablet there. And I don't know if it's because all of these graphic tablets, whether it's uh, XP Pen, Huion, there's a bunch of them. If they all use the same manufacturer for the screen, but every time I've gotten one of these tablets, a new one of these tablets, there's there's always like this film on top of the screen that kind of needs to be worn down. So when you get it in the beginning, there's quite a lot of resistance when you start sculpting and it can be quite annoying after, I don't know, I'd say a couple of days of use, not like, you know, eight hours a day, but just a couple of days, some hours here and there, that film does start to go away, especially the more you sort of rub the screen with the pen, the nib of the pen. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know why they all have it. it maybe it's just a protective coating from, from the factory or something. It's something that I've had an issue with, with all the tablets basically. So just be aware that that is there as well. It does go away. So, you know, it's not that big of an issue. And something I had to learn to correct for uh, right when I started using it was the, uh, I think it's called the parallax, like the difference between, you know, the, the glass or whatever the top of the screen is made of and the actual pressure sensitive part um, where the pixels are. Um, you know, there's a gap between those two. And so, you know, your pen goes on top of that. So there's like a gap here. And um, I found this to be in the beginning a little bit large, I guess that gap was. So in the beginning, my precision wasn't quite there. I tried going into the settings and adjusting everything, recalibrating a few times. And I think after about mm, maybe a week, a week and a half, I started getting used to it. And now that I've used it for a few months, it's really not an issue. So, you know, if this is something that you experience as well with, with one of these tablets, I wouldn't, I wouldn't immediately, you know, return it but like, oh, okay, too much parallaxing, but uh, just be aware that there can be that sort of barrier to entry when you start using a tablet like this. I think this goes for most other um, screen tablets as well. Now on to the good stuff. So, First of all, you know, right off the bat, I just want to say that I think the sculpting feel for this tablet is great. It does exactly what it's supposed to. The pressure sensitivity is good, except for those small clicks in the UI, like I said. But when I'm sculpting or when I'm texturing, painting, whatever it has been, the, it, every, it just works, you know. I really don't have any complaints when it comes to the sculpting or anything. Uh, there's been no driver issues where it's sort of lagged or jumped in and out. Everything just works. I open ZBrush, I start sculpting, and it feels exactly what I would expect it to feel. So in the sculpting department, you know, I would say it's perfect. And despite this one having the digits 22 in the name, this is apparently a 21 and a half inch tablet. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it didn't sound as catchy. Art is 21.5 as 22, I guess, but it's a 21.5 inch tablet. And around this mark, you know, 20 to 22, maybe even 24, I think that's a good size tablet for, for a screen tablet. It would be too big if it was just a regular, you know, tablet, um, a flat tablet without a screen. But when you do work on a screen, I feel it's nice to actually have a bigger surface. And this 21 and a half inches, I mean, while well, it takes up space on my desk for sure, because now I have three monitors, um, I think it's the perfect size for me. It's hard to give advice on what the perfect tablet sizes is. Tablet size is for everyone. You know, if you definitely, if you want to bring a screen tablet around with you, this would be too big. And I think maybe like a 27 inch or something like that, that's way too big for me. So this strikes, you know, that perfect middle ground between a small 
and a large tablet. And so much of this is personal preference, I, I think. Like there is no like, this is the best tablet or this is the best tablet. It really depends on your way of working. For me, I don't like tablets with buttons, whether it's a regular tablet or a screen tablet. I just want it to be all screen, right? I don't care about buttons on the side because I work in ZBrush and I use a lot of hotkeys. Now it can be a little bit cumbersome <laughs> because you need to keep your keyboard sort of behind, you know, behind the monitor. I, that's at least the most effective way I've found to, to work. But again, a lot of this really is personal preference. So maybe maybe you do your, use fewer hotkeys or you like to have them accessible right there on the screens or while you're painting or sculpting. So you might need to find one with buttons. But if you don't, I think this is great. You just slap your keyboard behind it and everything works as expected. And another bonus I would say of this uh, tablet is that right out of the box, the colors are great. Everything was calibrated correctly. And in terms of color accuracy, the, the XP pen actually just matched pretty well. Like I don't use it for painting. You know, I use texture painting, maybe in ZBrush or something like that. I don't use it for painting or illustrations. So there might be tweak, tweaks that you need to do. But for someone like me, where the majority of my work is sculpting, the colors came out and they're great. You can adjust them. You know, it's like any other regular monitor. Uh, I think you have like Kelvin and uh, red, green, blue channels that you can adjust, intensity, brightness, whatever. But for me, out of the box, everything just seemed to work. So all in all, for my sculpting needs, this tablet fulfills all of the needs that I have. You know, it sculpts great. The pressure sensitivity is good except for the UI stuff. There are some things that you need to get used to, especially if you switch to a tablet like this. It can be hard if, if you've either, yeah, especially if you've used another type of tablet like the regular tablets before. Switching to a, a screen tablet in general can be tricky. But if you're looking for a screen tablet, I think on a budget, which is great, I think the XP pen, the XP pen is, is a solid choice. Like with my other review, I actually have a hard time figuring out what the extra money spent will get you with a more high-end tablet. Maybe it'll show, you know, in, in durability or driver issues, whatever it may be down the line. But having used this for a couple of months, so far I haven't really found any major faults with it that would lead me to not really recommend this product. I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description uh, where you can actually get this tablet and get more information on it. And XP Pen was also kind enough to provide a discount code for you guys. We don't get any kickback or anything from it. It's just really to give you a cheaper option to get this tablet. So check out the link in the description and let us know if you wanna see more content like this, maybe even a comparison between the XP Pen and the Huion. So, Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.